All right, this is just like a uh, follow-up video. I just finished doing this drive motor in this thing, and that's been working well. I just spent a couple hours pressure washing this thing, the inside of it. It's just amazing how much stuff will build up in these. So it's it's a lot cleaner. Um, I mean, there was like inches of dirt just caked in the bottom of this thing. And um, there's like holes that you got to like pressure wash all this stuff out of. It's kind of a fun job pressure washing these out but it does take some time so I got this pretty clean now but I'm just noticing right here I sh don't know how I didn't notice this sooner there's a cover right there that's missing that's probably the server something in there but um I don't think I ever had that cover I mean I certainly never took it off so uh, I think that's letting in dirt and it could even you know a stick or something could jam in there and damage maybe one of those hoses so let's get that that replaced so if you were to order that from Bobcat, I'm sure it'd be like a million dollars. So for just a flat plate of steel, let's just make it. So we have it on this side here. So let's uh, take that off, use that as a template, and cut out a new one for the other side. Watch, I'm going to take this off and then find a whole other big area that needs pressure washing. Let's see. Oh. Oh, hang on. This isn't just a flat plate. It goes down here and has a bend in it. Let's see if it fits this side. Yeah, that, that looks fine. All right, so let's uh, see if we can copy this. All right, so I'm gonna make this video kind of about the pl using a plasma cutter, how about that? Um, I've used it in other videos before, but I never really explained any of it. I just kind of used it. So uh, let me explain it a little bit. So I'm gonna start out, so I got this plate of steel. This is about the same thickness as this plate, and I'm gonna use, this is called soapstone, and I'm gonna use that to trace this out. Now the reason I'm using soapstone is cause the heat from a torch or plasma cutter won't like erase it. Which could be a problem with some other things to write on here, so. Alright, so we're all set up here to do some to cutting. So this is the plasma cutter we're going to be using here. You know, when I bought this, I just went to like my local welding shop and just said, you know, I need a plasma cutter. And then he tried selling me one. I was like, no, give me, I forgot what I spent on this, but it, it wasn't the cheapest one. Like I went up a few steps. I feel like if you go buy the cheapest one, like a Harbor Freight one or something, it'd probably be one of those tools where it works, but it sucks. And I know I didn't want to do that with this because then like you buy something like it works but it sucks but and then you end up buying a good one anyway. So I was like oh, let me just skip that stage of buying the crappy tool and just get a good one. So this one I think this will cut over an inch thick of material. I know it said in the literature somewhere. Um, the stuff we're cutting here is pretty thin. You know anything could cut that. One video I used it for which it did a very impressive job and a few people asked me about it and ordered them was uh, cutting out these wedges for this log splitter. Now, now these are made of, what is this? So that's some one inch thick plate, but then I had to cut it at an angle too, which makes it thicker. So look, we got an inch and a half there and it was able to cut that. And then I just touched it up with a uh, grinder to smooth it out. But you know, that's, that's pretty nice. That's what you want the tool to do is actually work when you go to use it. 
So another thing that does a similar job to a plasma cutter would be like a, a torch set. Um, so this is a here. You have your two tanks. You got oxygen and acetylene tank uh, with your regulators. And then you have, then this is the torch right And then this is what the torch looks like here. So this is a cutting torch, that's a tip. And that would cut that plate out just fine too. The advantages, the advantages to a, a torch are that it doesn't need any electric, which is nice. So you don't, you can be using this thing anywhere. Plus you can heat stuff up to bend with it or heat up bolts, which helps heat, get bolts out. So it's very nice. As far as cutting out like a, a shape like that out of a new plate of steel, yes, it will do it. It doesn't do the cleanest job, but it's certainly acceptable. The plasma cutter is a little bit cleaner. The torch is definitely better if you're cutting up like garbage or something. Um, the other thing I don't like about the torch, it's expensive to run because you're always kind of getting these tanks filled up, and it's just kind of annoying. So you kind of have to have your tanks, and then you got to have backups there so if I'm in the middle of a job and one of these gets empty you know I'm not running to the, the store which in my case is like an hour drive both directions to get them filled up I, I have them here so that's what's nice about the plasma cutter is you don't have to buy anything it's just electric so let's set it up so for electric this is the plug here that's 220 volts 50 amps it's this type of plug now you gotta hook it up to an air compressor to supply air. So this one it says uh, four horsepower, 12 gallons. That runs it fine. I have this little one over here. I tried using that in the past. So this is one horsepower, three gallons. And it could not run the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter, it has the air. You hook your air up to it. And uh, that's it, you're ready to run. So I know I, I said you never have to buy anything for it, but it does have these tips that, you, that wear out occasionally, but they're cheap and they last a long time, so it's not a big deal. All right, so and before we start here, we'll just look, go over some safety tips. So the, I think the guy just sold me a set of like sunglasses when I bought the thing, but this is better because it kind of covers your whole face, plus it has this flip-down visor so you can flip it up to grind. Plus I always wear safety glasses. You know, gloves are a good idea. Um, you definitely want to wear shoes that don't have, like, sneakers that have, like, all vents in them because the, the hot pieces will fall down in the vents and burn your foot. That's annoying. So shoes like this is a must. Um, as far as your work environment, you know, I built this whole building out of these steel containers and a concrete roof so the thing would never burn down. That was my whole... Thing. I could do metal work in here without ever having to worry about the building burning. But, you know, I should move some, so these gas cans and stuff, let me just move those into the other room or anything else that's flammable. But it's not a big deal. But if you're in like a wooden building, you know, keep an eye on that. Like don't go plasma cut something and then leave 10 minutes later, you know, stick around, just make sure no, no sparks are anywhere. All right, so let's uh, get to work here. That's ready to go. All right, to make this work, you have to uh, ground your, your work and then the uh, cutting torch on it. So, right, so this is the torch here, and when you squeeze the trigger, all right, so as far as tracing this out, so I added this standoff. This was an accessory, and what that does is it, it keeps the torch tip the perfect amount off the work. Because you don't want to touch this to your work, that will ruin the uh, tip. So this was definitely a nice accessory. So, you know, you could just freehand this. The other option for this straight section here, you know, instead of trying to freehand something like that, you could use something to trace. So I could hold this there, that's perfect. And now I can cut that and do a perfect job. Um, the other option too, if you want to spend some money, they have like a, a machine that can do this. And the machine will, it does it perfect. So you can literally write something fancy or cut out any shape you want. You program it in the computer first. But 
for what this is, I can just, I can freehand most of this. All right, let's get started. Alright, so here's our plate there. You know, that was really easy. That only took a minute or so. Um, so you can see there's a little bit of stuff on the edges, so let's just clean that up. We'll use a grinder and with a flat disc, or you can use a grinding disc too. good enough you know I mean the tolerance of this all I was doing was going covering something so it didn't really it didn't need to be perfect but that's fine so this original plate it's got this little bend in it but you know that's so small I don't even think that matters so let's uh, hit this with some spray paint and go put it on all right so I cut these holes a little bigger than they needed to be that way there's no chance of it not lining up. All right, I got them all started. Whenever you're putting pretty much anything together, make sure you get all the bolts started before you tighten them. Alright, check that out. That looks like a factory piece in there. You can't even tell that was made. Alright, so I'll put links in the description for all the uh, tools that I used here. You know, this was really kind of meant to be a video about the plasma cutter, so just kind of showing what kind of things you can expect to do with a tool like that. And uh, up updates on repair stuff. You know, this is the other jet ski I bought, and that those pair, you know, the pair of $50 wave runners. And I've been working on it. I got the motor freed up, it didn't have any spark, I ordered, I got a good deal on every single electrical part for it, you know, the st everything that was under the flywheel and the whole wiring harness and electrical box, so that will make fixing that extremely easy, you know, the motor's out of it, but you know, it's getting towards to be the end of the season, so um, I still do want to try to finish that, but it, you know, it's not a huge priority right now, and uh, I got a video coming out on this soon too I want to just put do a repair on the exhaust the section of pipe rusted out and I want to add a muffler to it because uh, I never had a muffler and the thing's kind of loud you know it's just that straight pipe so I'm curious how much quieter a muffler will make it <laughs> 